Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. Here where I can find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and here where I can get your free 8 psychology book box set at ConnorWhiteley.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 84 of the Psychology World Podcast with me, Connor Wiley. And today's episode is on what do social groups do for individuals. So I think this is a really interesting episode simply because in like social psychology we hear a lot about how great social groups can be for people. Yes, I feel like people's like mental health and everything, but we never specifically look at uh, the uh, details of it. It's like what uh, benefits do a social groups have for people. So this is a really interesting episode and hopefully you will really enjoy it. And it is Sunday the 11th of April 2021 as I record this. So moving on to psychology news section, we're going to be reading from the British Psychological Society Research Digest. So the first one is, we have many more than five senses. Here's how to make the most of them. We're all familiar with the phrase uh, healthy body and healthy mind, but this doesn't just refer to physical fitness and muscle strength. For a healthy mind, we need to have healthy senses too. Fortunately, there's now a wealth of evidence that we can train our many senses to improve not only how we use our bodies, but how we think and behave, as well as how we feel. Trapped as we are in our own perceptual bubbles, it can be hard to appreciate not only that other people sense things differently, but but so that we can as well, if we only put in a little bit of effort. But if we're going to make the most of it using and improving our senses and our well-being, we have to consider more than sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. Aristotle's desperately outdated five-sense model may still be popular, but it's vastly underestimates our extraordinary human cap- capability. Then the article like, goes on to talk about some of the other senses, like for example, the sterbial senses, which is all to do with like, balance, though, so I'll just read like, some of it. So our uh, the sterbial system, probably completely butchered like that name, allows us to sense the, the sense of the direction of, of gravity and uh, so which way is up, as well as horizontal and vertical movements uh, as in a car or a lift and in a three dimensions as on a roller coaster. Research shows that this shows that a healthy vestibular system is important not only for good balance, but for our sense of being grounded in inside our own bodies. In fact, people with this with a balance problems, I think that's easier just to say it, are more likely to report out of body experiences. They're also more likely to get lost because a healthy balance system is important for good sense of a direction. For all of us though, the older we get, the duller our balance responses become. Specific balance rehabilitation training exercises have been developed for people diagnosed with definite balance problems, but the rest of us will benefit from dynamic movements that require the movement of the head like those in a loved in a climbing the tree or practicing Tai Chi, as well as anything else that challenges our balance. So I think it's really interesting though, and yes, yeah, so this is a really good article, so I do recommend that you go on the British Psychological Society Research Digest um, website though, because it is a quite an interesting article. And then the other one that we'll do is that bullying between frenemies is surprisingly common. We already know that bullying can be one way of of climbing the social ladder for teenagers. Research published in 2019, for instance, found that teenagers who combined aggressive behaviour with pro-sociality see the most social success. But who exactly are teenagers are bullying? According to a new study, it might not be who you expect. Rather than bullying those more distant to them, the team finds that teens often pick on their own friends. And so I think is actually quite an interesting little finding though, because you really would think that, like, first of all, though, that if you're going to like bully someone, then uh, you bully someone that you don't know. Uh, simply because, though, like, it makes no sense of bullying people in your in group because you already got their, like, respect. And as we're going to look at today, though, being a part of a, a social group does have a lot of uh, benefits for you. So why would you want to mess that up? So this is a really interesting article, though, and I definitely think that it's, like, food for thought, though. And to be honest, I've actually had tons of egg experience when it will be like bullied by friends or people you thought were your friends. So, so I do understand it though. So definitely a like interesting article. And it also just shows that 
just because something is common sense doesn't mean it's actually correct. Because when I started university, our first social psychology like lecture that was actually based on um, dispelling some of the myths. And that was actually really interesting, though, because some of the logical answers research completely disapproved. So it was definitely food for thought, though. So um, I really hope that you enjoy the psychology um, news section. So let's move on to the personal update. So we're moving on to the personal update. So this week, there's not a lot to actually talk about in like this personal update. So I'm at some, I'm going to keep it like quite a brief though, because I've been doing like lots of um exams like this week. I thought, for example, on a Thursday, I had a statistic exam, which I think like went like rather well though. And then on Wednesday, I had a computing exam on like how to use SPS and all those little fun formats. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, the last two questions completely threw me, though, right, because um, it was to do with the SPS encoding, and those of you that have done, like, psychology probably know my pain when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, but that was, like, fine, though. But something else that I wanted to mention, though, was that my parents got vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine and, like, the other week, though, and they suffered, like, no side effects. So I'm really pleased that, th- that they've got their first shot and they've got their first vaccine already, like, and they've got their second vaccine, like, booked up. So I'm really pleased that they're getting like, vaccinated, though. So please, 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 whatever country, like, you're in, though, when you get calls uh, to become, like, vaccinated, whether it's, like, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, egg, etc. Please get vaccinated. It's the only way how we're going to come out of the pandemic. And as always, I, I always like, love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, connorwhitely at connorwhitely.net. You can always leave a comment in the show notes at connorwhitely.net forward slash podcast. And you can tweet me on Twitter at sci fi whitely. And I can happily say, social psychology. A guide to social and cultural psychology is being released today, so I'm really pleased about that. And that is the sponsored product for today's episode. This is a great book that really goes into great depth about social psychology, and then it also talks about cultural psychology. So this book is broken down into lots of easy to understand and really engaging chapters where I talk about the psychology, I tell you about the theory, and also adding like my own like thoughts and feelings. Like it's a great conversational book, and it's not like a boring textbook that you usually buy the website if you want to learn about um, social psychology so if you want to learn about social groups sexism social hierarchies how you do with social psychology it's like it goes into a bit of the like research and methods though but so this book covers like so much i absolutely loved writing it so i'm really pleased like with it and this is another book that's done really well during the pre-order phase i'm really really pleased with it and hopefully you will like love it too though so that is social psychology a guy's social and a cultural psychology so you can buy the ebook available on all on all major ebook retailers you can buy the paperback large print and hardback versions from amazon or your local bookstore and you can get the ebook directly from me at payhip.com forward slash connor whitely and uh, buying a direct is a great way to support authors and uh, support this uh, podcast so that's enough for personal update so let's move on to the content part of today's episode so uh, moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about uh, what do social groups do for the individual. So this is a great topic that I really enjoyed that work because I also had to do a like social psychology essay on it. So it was actually quite interesting to really dive into the theory. And this is a um, excerpt from Social Psychology, a guide to social and a cultural psychology third edition. So like last week, I'm going to play the audiobook version, and then I will hop in at the end to give you like a bit more information and about it and also like my own thoughts and feelings on the uh, chapter so i'll see you like in a minute or two or probably quite a few <laughs> chapter three what groups do for individuals throughout the book you're going to see a lot about social groups and the negative side from social influence to intergroup relationships you're going to see quite a bit of a negativity surrounding the social groups so in this chapter i wanted to stress that social groups can benefit us a lot interdependence Firstly, being a part of a social group is more interdependent and people often achieve more in their groups than alone. Tibet and Kelly, 1955. I certainly know this from doing a group project at a university because depending on the members of a group, a presentation or a report can take half the time. A classic example of this idea is trade unions. Dessa and Halas, 2000. Because people who identify highly with the union are more likely to take part in conflicts compared to if they were alone. Even people with low identification with the groups are more willing to take part in the action 
when it's in their own interest. I did this in 2020 when Audible was and still is as of January 2021 was abusing authors by hiding returns data and encouraging customers to read an entire audiobook that they love and return it. Yes, it's a great benefit for the customers, but authors are losing a lot of their money to this great benefit to customers. Therefore, as a member of the Alliance of Independent Authors, and I identify highly with the group, I took actions by signing some petitions, cancelling my Audible membership and telling people about the conflict. Affiliation, similarity and support. Another great benefit of being a part of a social group is a grouping together with people who have the same attitudes. Bannister and Leary, 1995, and the same problems. This is a great benefit because it allows people to come together and talk about their attitudes, when it might not be a, a good thing to talk about their attitudes with other people. For example, I would talk about my dislike for Brexit with my family and friends, but I wouldn't talk about that topic to a lot of other people. Furthermore, social groups allow people to feel understood, less alone, and befriended. Can it be seen in a people that are sad since they seek support? Grey? Issy and Ambadi, 2011. Terror Management. I think this benefit has definitely been proven by the COVID-19 pandemic because, let's face it, we're all going to die. Therefore, people will look for structure to contain the inevitability of a death. Greenberg and all, 1986. This is applied by group norms, identifies values and a human company, also known as social groups. Needs for social identity. We'll discuss social identity a lot more in a few chapters time, but social groups are great at providing us with social identity. This is very important for reducing subjective uncertainty about the world. Hogs and all 2008. Optimal distinctness. Let's face it, people love to be special and people want to be different and unique. This is where optimal distinctiveness comes in, because people need to distinguish themselves. Brewer, 1991. But we need to affiliate with others as well. Therefore, being a part of a group means that we get to affiliate with others, but we get to be distinctive members of that group and a wider society as a whole. Strategies for Optimal Distinctiveness There are lots of ways to achieve optimal distinctiveness. For example, people can identify with a subgroup of a mainstream group. This allows us to be distinctive and socialise with other people. Homsey and Jetson, 2004 Another strategy is to identify with a non-mainstream group and this is where my strategy comes in. As an author and authors are hardly mainstream, so I get to socialise with other authors, yet I am distinctive in terms of I write books and I run my own creative global empire slash business. You might have your own idea about this strategy. For example, if you're in the UK, then during your university years you might have belonged to a non-mainstream society. Club. I remember one of my friends that belonged to the Quidditch Society, and yes, that is the sport from Harry Potter. However, people can achieve optimal distinctiveness by making themselves unique with a distinct role. So, you might be the leader of a social group, or you might make yourself important to the group. Like in my university's Baking Society, I'm a treasurer in 2020 to 2021. Other benefits of a social groups are positive consequences for the self, and they give us the motivation to protect the group. Hi everyone, so this chapter I really enjoyed her work because it really goes into some great uh, like depth though and I'd actually forgotten that I'd actually put some of that personal stuff in there but Optimal Distinctiveness is a really important though like for all of us though because we all want to be a special though where we all want to feel important and social groups allow us like to do that and if we aren't special then we all do tend to feel we're quite down though. So it's really important and this book is filled with a lot of great other chapters and something else that I really like about social psychology is that you can apply it to everyday life and which let's face it, some areas of psychology you just cannot apply to everyday life though. So that's why I really like social work psychology. So I really, really, really recommend this book. So that is Social Psychology, a guide to social and social work psychology available on all major ebook retailers, and you can get the paperback, hardback, and large print versions from Amazon or your local bookstore. And you can buy the ebook directly from me at payhim.com forward slash Connor Whiteley. And if you know someone who would enjoy today's episode, then please share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help us spread the word about the podcast. So have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. And if you want a free Ada book psychology box set, then please go to connorwhitesley.net.
have a great day and i'll see you next time